So it's an exciting one today. We're testing out the brand new Sony FX30. At the price point, this is gonna be a great buy for a lot of people that wanna start in wildlife filmmaking and also for people that have been in it a while because this has got some really interesting features that will help. I come to this hide especially because there's a lot of action constantly. It's not the most, you know, exotic wildlife, let's put it that way, but it gives me some nice chance to really try out all the settings and compare it. So obviously there's no such thing as the perfect camera and there are some big drawbacks. One of the biggest deal breakers I think is no EVF, electronic viewfinder. Now this is a must to review your image, but also to, to see better. You know, you never know what conditions you're filming in and having that reliable high quality source that you can look through and isolate everything else and see the image is very important. Now I have all an EVF that connects through the HDMI uh, brand called Port Keys, but it hasn't arrived yet. And the other big issue is probably its low light capability. Up to 60 frames, I don't think you'll have too much of an issue. Up to 60 frames, you're downsampling that 6K image uh, into a 4K image, which gives you a nice sharper result normally. When you get to the 100 frames in a super slow motion frame rates of this camera, you're cropping into that super 35 sensor. So already it's a crop sensor, but then you're cropping in and just pulling that 4K image out of it. So that means noise will be a lot more visible in your image. So when you crank that ISO, you are going to notice it more. Now with programs like Topaz, Video AI and Denoiser and even plugins for like DaVinci and Neat Video, you can get around it. It's not a complete deal breaker. This, this is also a dual native ISO sensor. It's at 800 and 2500. So there's not much of range at all really with that. I think also there are so many more pros with this camera as a wildlife filmmaker. A lot of people may not like that Super 35 because it does crop in and you don't get that full frame look. For wildlife that can actually be a benefit. Having that to start with is great because then when you use a clear image zoom on top of that you're getting another 1.5 times so you're really getting a lot of reach for your lenses without losing too much light keeping that lens at the same f-stop. The 120 frames and the 100 frames one of the downsides is that it crops in and pulls that image out uh, creating more noise. Now in low light, yeah, there's a downside, but in good light it could be a benefit because even if something's further away, I get that additional 1.5 times crop. You're getting basically a three times crop from a full size sensor with the Super 35 sensor crop and then plus another 1.5 times crop going into 120 frames. Finally, animal and bird IAF in video. I'm waiting for Sony to bring out a firmware update at least for the Sony A1 and if you seen a lot of other youtubers like philip bloom they're pushing that for sony to at least put that in their flagship the other new goodies that sony has given us that i really like this has completely changed me and i don't think i can go back now and that's autofocus assist basically what autofocus assist is i can be in autofocus and have i aaf and everything like that working but sometimes when your focus is really far off, it doesn't catch the eye. Now I can just turn the manual focus ring and then it will go straight into manual focus. I grab focus, I release, and then it goes back into autofocus and locks on. And believe me, once you use it, especially for wildlife filmmaking, when you've got little birds in little bushes or behind things, just use that, grab the focus, then it locks on. It's brilliant. I didn't think it would be that good. I'd like it that much, but I think the biggest thing I've taken away from this camera is that autofocus assist. The speed of now I can grab small birds in focus is uh, jumped up really quick. The screen, they have upped it. I can't remember the top of my head. I'll put it down here. And it does make a difference. Uh, the image is a lot clearer. It's still not a big enough screen to just completely use it or brighten enough in my opinion.
opinion but it is nice that they've upped the resolution a little bit and also they've got a few other things in the menu system that they've changed they've got these my menu now the first two pages and basically it's got everything you need quickly you can then get on those two menus and it still has that my menu system so you can put your favorite things on there the screen as well is a lot cleaner you know you haven't got text and numbers and stuff all around the screen it's in that blackout thing it's very small looks a lot cleaner while looking at the back of the camera which I like now I have configured this how I like it I still got a lot of tweaking to do in my menu and organize it but what I'll do is um, I'll leave a we transfer link in the description and you can download the settings I've been using for this FX 30 all the other ports are, are the same but you obviously have got a few more mounting points without a cage on here now I am going to get a cage just to raise it up a bit more more and also add a bit more accessories like the EVF that I've ordered and still have my Atomos Ninja. Also the screen because the fan comes out there is a nice little finger hole to uh, grab the screen. A lot more easy to pull out compared to the Sony a7S 3 Same flip screen but uh, and it also feels a bit more solid I maybe because that over time I know that's sort of a known issue for the Sony a7S 3 The screens are a bit flimsy but Sony, I think all Sony cameras are, you know, they're not the most solid builds. When you compare it and you pick up a Nikon or a Canon that feels a lot more robust in the hand. The big thing I do like is, well, there's a record button at the front and I love that. Because I'm mainly working on a tripod, I'm normally this side of the camera being right-handed and everything. That means when I've got my hand on my tripod arm, I have to take it off to then press record but having this record button here i can press record i can grab my focus wheel my zoom reel and control it all this way so then i can operate the camera really nicely i've got my lens controls there everything i need the zoom rocker big love that because that frees up another custom button because i used to use that as like the delete custom button custom button four i push that then use the iso wheel to zoom in now i can smoothly zoom using this zoom rocker at the front i can now customize that different speed and I've just used it as clear image zoom because obviously I don't have a servo lens with a zoom so that gives me another 1.5 times crop when I need it so it's nice it's like having a little built-in teleconverter into your lens that you can then zoom in now I do think autofocus doesn't work as well I think you may lose eye autofocus uh, when you do that but you should be further enough zoomed in that it should grab focus or go into manual focus now that means the on and buff button that is moved to the back and I think it's mainly muscle memory that I struggle and it's quite small you sort of have to use your nail to get in there uh, but again I think that's mainly muscle memory and hopefully you know that will come and it wouldn't be too much of an issue the mode dial is a big disappointment I've got so used to having that mode dial I don't use all the other bits like auto and stuff that can all go but I like having the free mode dials the one two and three because I have different settings for each one there is obviously that still in this camera but you have to press mode and then move the joystick down so it's extra step whereas this I can just click to twist and I'm in in that mode um, again it's muscle memory more than anything but I'm not enjoying that as much I'd love them to put a mode dial just literally just for the settings I don't need anything else the top handle is a great accessory to have because I love having XLR audio it gives me better shotgun mics especially for wildlife where I want reach from the uh, super cardio microphone but the top handle it doesn't feel strong at all I wouldn't put any weight on it and if you've got a big rig I wouldn't hold it on it but I think the weak point is actually in that u-bend because because it is plastic uh, I really hope that they bring out a metal version I don't mind paying a little bit more obviously it's added weight but being on a tripod or whatever I would like that also the other thing that they brought on here is tally lights for client work and stuff great love to have tally lights no especially if I've got two or three cameras running you can quickly look over and see it's recording with wildlife not much of an issue sometimes you don't want this front light on you especially with you know 
low light shooting and you've got a very sensitive animal you don't want a big flat you know red light coming out from your hide or anything like that but you can turn them off altogether the good thing about being an APS-C camera because this is sort of a module system that I have I can make this really compact the beautiful thing about APS-C Super 35 lenses is they're a lot cheaper and a lot lighter and you can get those faster apertures without making the lens giant so if you're starting out wildlife filmmaking I think for me a great choice would be the FX 30 and that 75 to 350 millimeter uh, and you can pretty much get some probably stunning images out of that uh, and have it so light and compact but if you wanted to do that on full frame you're looking at a log you know you're looking at this 200 to 600 pretty much having this APS-C camera gives me another weapon in my arsenal where I can have a smaller setup and a smaller rig uh, to travel with you know be a bit more low-key with it maybe uh, and if I'm just going on a normal holiday I can just chuck it in the bag and then give me the reach that I'm used to working with now the price point is very appealing but they have labeled it as a cine camera and I think if you have got a cine camera I would expect at least waveforms and shutter angle now waveforms are a lot better for me to expose i would also like false color i like false color even more but the combination of false color and waveform really helps me expose my shots a lot better than using a histogram but yeah calling it a cine camera is a loose term i would say it's a mirrorless camera designed for video now the other thing that they brought out in this and uh, with firmware with the fx3 is cine ei mode cine ei can be complicated there's plenty of good videos out there i'll link a few in the descriptions if you want to know more uh, but obviously that's just giving you your camera the best possible settings for dynamic range the two native iso points of this sensor is 800 and 2500 cine ai full mode will lock you into those two iso values and then if you adjust it you're not actually doing anything to the image being recorded but just your viewing it saves that metadata which then you can take into catalyst browse and see that data and then adjust it to how you looked at it back of the viewfinder for me i'm using the cine ei mode but i'm using it as flexible iso because for wildlife there's too much change ideally i would love to leave it at 800 and 2500 but it's just not realistic what i do i'd rather have it in those uh, cine ai to put it in s log and give me that best range and everything like that but i do leave it in flexible iso i need that flexibility you know if, if a bird goes under shade in the middle of a shot i have to i have to change it you know i'd rather get the shot and have deal with the noise and the artifacts afterwards that at least maybe some post software can and then help me recover that image a bit better but if it was an interesting animal behavior or you know something unique i'd rather still capture it to see if i can recover it afterwards and coming from this it gives you the option to add luts i love that having those luts uh, option built in is really nice touch because it's very hard sometimes to judge your exposure with the tools that you have in this camera just histogram basically or zebras because sometimes you're shooting s-log and you think because it's so flat you're like yeah that looks really nice and everything like that and then you bring it in you know put a bit of contrast and color in and you're like oh god i'm pushing this already uh, whereas if you have that light you have that visible reassurance that you're not pushing it too much uh, and you can see sort of what your final image will look like after post coming back to that price and size i think if you're starting out this is a great option to look at if you're purely looking at doing filmmaking especially wildlife filmmaking i think this is a great option there are just two big issues for me i think uh, for the work that i do one is the low light but that's not an issue because i have the sony a7s3 and i can swap in between Obviously, it'd be nice to have it all in one camera, but it's, for the price it is, it's a sacrifice you probably have to pay in having an APS-C sensor. And again, like I said before, the EVF, no EVF is it's not ideal. I love the reach. That's what, you know, the biggest selling factor for me. Having that extra reach has been really nice, especially for these small, tiny birds. You know, it's got the high frame rates, 6K down sample to 4K. It's light. It's got all the modern things that you see in 
and Sony cameras, the dual CF Express Type A cards, focus breathing compensation, focus mapping, bird and animal eye autofocus in video. I love that autofocus list. It, literally, I don't think I can go back now. For filmmaking, you know, I like the Super 35 lenses especially. Anything that makes my kit lighter without losing stops of light and uh, quality, then it's going to be a bonus for me. Again, if you have like the a7 IV or the A1 or the R series you know you can crop in uh, into that Super 35 anyway but it just means that you can use clear image zoom a bit more on different frame rates and then you've got bigger crop factor when you're getting into the uh, higher frame rates as well. Yeah overall I think it's a, a great camera and for what 2,000 euros I think you're getting an absolute steal. Thank you to Han for letting me use this hide and he's got 10 of these hides I think across the country and I'm going to be trying out some of his other hides he's got a lovely one i think it's called hide six and you get kingfishes he said he gets ospreys there which is very exciting i do want to film an osprey check them out if you're in the netherlands there's loads of different hides with all different types of species in each one but yeah enjoyed it fx30 great shout especially if you're uh, getting into wildlife filmmaking don't uh, turn your nose up on it just because it's not a full frame sensor sometimes those things work in your advantage. That's me from here. Uh, I'm gonna film that cheeky little woodpecker and then head home. Peace.